Hey guys and welcome to my dedicated pre-release analysis for Kokowa. I briefly talked about her in one of my previous videos, but since we have more information about Kokowa possibly coming to the game right after Viper, I figured that this would be a good time to go back and take a deeper look at this character. But before that, a quick word from today's video sponsor, Bluestacks. In this new update, Bluestacks is now the world's first Android emulator to have Android 11. Bluestacks will run your game smoother than any other emulator, letting you play your favorite games at 120fps or more, and letting you save up to 75% RAM usage using Eco Mode. More updates will be added in the coming weeks, so be sure to keep in touch with the official Bluestacks social media pages so you don't miss out on that. I also want to let you know that I will be using Bluestacks for the gameplay in this video, so if you like what you see, definitely check out Bluestacks using my link in the description as it really helps out the channel. And with that being said, let's get on with the content. Alright so today I decided to go back and cover Kokoa's kit because the background video for her recruit banner was recently leaked so it's very likely that she will be the next right up character. In this video we will go over her skills to give you an idea on how she works and we will also compare her to the other units that fill the same role to see how good she is and if I think she is worth pulling for. First of all, Kokoa is a sniper rifle user from the tetra line of units classified as a support in a burst 1 character. Her element is not specified but based on her skills damage type she will probably have the fire element. First up, we have our skill 1. Professional Origami. This one has a passive effect that triggers every 15 seconds. It will recover 17.76% of the cover's HP for all of your allies, and it will also remove 2 debuffs from 2 of your allies with an active debuff. Comparing this to later skill 2, Kokowa recovers a total of 88.8% .8 of your team's cover HP across all 5 characters, and later recovers 105% cover HP across 2 of your characters with the lowest HP. This means that Kokowa's skill 1 will be better for stages where the enemies consistently hit multiple members in your team. But if let's say you are in a single target stage, and you have a dedicated tank unit with a taunt effect, Litter's HP recovery will be better because your tank will most likely have the lowest HP, always making them the target for Litter's skill 2, which also has way more HP recovery per character compared to Kokowa's skill 1. One thing that is very situational but can also make Kokowa's skill slightly better is the additional cleansing from her skill 1. Being able to remove 2 debuffs from your allies is really good, especially in PvP. We have a lot of characters that apply debuffs and some of them have a high impact in their team's overall damage. So being able to remove at least a few of them can give you an upper hand in the battle. Moving on to her skill 2, Pro Ketchup. This is a passive skill that triggers whenever Kokowa does a full charge attack. This will give her a mini broom effect that decreases her damage taken by 4.37% at level 10. The mini broom effect can stack up to 15 times and the stack will last for 5 seconds. With a level 10 skill and maximum stacks, this will give Kokowa a total of 65.55% reduction to the damage she takes, which is actually really good. And depending on how long it takes for her to reload, you might have to use a resilience cube so that you will have a better chance of keeping the maximum stack on her mini broom effect. And lastly, we have her burst called Pro Mate. This burst ability has a 20 second cooldown and it is also a pure support burst which means that it deals no damage. This will remove one debuff from all of your allies and if Kokowa has maximum stacks on her broom effect, this will decrease the attack for all of your enemies by 13.59% at level 10 and the effect will last for 10 seconds. The cleansing effect from this ability is very strong, especially considering that the effect applies to everyone in your team. And on top of Kokowa's skill 1, this will be very useful in PvP, especially against characters with a lot of debuff application. The attack increase is also really good, but you will most likely only have max mini broom stacks right around when you use her burst the second time. But if you are able to apply the attack debuff on your enemies, this pairs really well with an immortal Emma team because this will let Emma take more hits, letting her heal more and increase her overall survivability. Kokowa's kit is leaning more towards PvP because of how much cleansing effect she has. It can be useful in PvE, but enemy debuffs in PvE are really not that common compared to PvP. And speaking of, her value highly depends on whether the enemy has a lot of debuffs or not. Because if the enemy has little to no debuff application, you are only left with Kokowa's HP recovery and the damage reduction effects in the form of Kokowa's mini broom effect from her skill 2 and the additional attack damage reduction from her burst. So if you can't really get much out of the cleansing effects, you are better off using other burst 1 units that will increase your team's damage instead. As I mentioned earlier in this video, the best Kokowa team that I can think of is the Immortal Emma team. You can use Kokowa as your second burst 1 unit so that she will have maximum stacks on her mini broom effect whenever she uses her burst and trigger the reduced attack damage effect for the enemies. Outside of that, she can still be very good in any team composition with the tank just because of how much utility she has for survivability but you still probably need a dedicated healer to keep your team alive. Overall, I think that Kokowa is a slightly better unit compared to the other limited time units that we currently have. She still has the same problem as Viper and Jackal, in a sense that they are way too specific and is only really useful for a certain type of content. 
So if you already have Litter or any of the top tier Burst 1 units, you can most likely skip this character, not unless you need another Burst 1 unit for the special arena, if that's something you are really pushing for. But like I always say, I don't really recommend going for characters just because they are good in PvP, especially if you are free to play or a low spender. The rewards are not that great, and once you get to the top percentile, the increase in rewards is very minimal. Also keep in mind that we have two other characters that are getting released next month. One of them is another SSR unit and the other character named Aid would be a free character just like Neve. We do have a bit of information about the character's kit but I'm still waiting on the number values before I do my pre-release analysis on them. With that being said, make sure to leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss out on that. Also don't forget to check out Blue Stacks using my link in the description below. It really does help out the channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.